It's very exciting to see. And it was very good worship. The presence of God was awesome. We thank God for this. And today, as we have heard many uh, announcements, especially, it was really touch our hearts when, like our pastors, is passing through a tough time. But we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Because Lord is same yesterday, today, and forever. Today, uh, I was praying and thinking about, and uh, it was in my heart to talk about prayer. And I had a number of scriptures. All my notes are there. But last night, I was praying, and about 2 o'clock, uh, it came something add up in, in that, and it slightly changed what I was bringing because that was uh, in my heart before a few weeks. But sometimes our desires are something, our preparations are something, but Lord wants to say something else which is more important than what we think. And as we talk about, I will start with, with the prayer, what prayer I was studying and preparing notes and all this. In the Old Testament, if we go and see how people, people's life been changed through prayer. Many, many uh, men of God you can find and you would see, you can name as many as you could, but most of the time when we talk about prayer, we talk about Daniel. Because it is very clear that he used to pray three times a day. And then if we go further down, we, we know that Elijah was a man of prayer. He says things and happens and miracles happens and signs and wonders happens. And many other Esther or you can name it, Nehemiah or there are many, many prayer warriors and men of God who are all Testament champion of prayers. But what's about the New Testament? You can find in New Testament there are people like Paul who claim that he pray more than anybody else. But if we focus on the word of God, you would come to know that the greatest prayer is written in the Bible is the champion has prayed. His name is Jesus. Jesus has prayed in John chapter 17. The whole chapter is about prayer. There are 26 verses. And all these six, 26 verses, Jesus is praying. And if you read, and if you read again, if you read again, you would, you would get blessed every time you're going to read that. Because Jesus' words are still moving around because Jesus' prayer is a live prayer. It will never destroy until the foundation of the earth. It started from there until the earth is remain. His prayer, his word, always with us. And the amazing prayer is, I love, you know, that's what I was saying. I was thinking about Daniel's life, uh, Elijah's life and all this. But God brought me here about the King of King and the Lord of Lord life. What he prayed. And it's whole chapter, as I said, 26 verses are very powerful. Each and every word, it speaks to your life. It speaks me. I read a few times and I was thinking I have to read all chapter, but there are some other things I have to add and I would not have full time, I mean, as much time as I wanted to. But in Chapter 17, John chapter 17, I'm going to start with that. Jesus' prayer to be glorified. That's the first part of his prayer. The second part of the prayer, which we divide into three parts, Jesus prayed for his disciples. That Lord, protect them. And then the third part, Jesus prayed for all of the believer who would receive message from Jesus to disciples and disciples to us and from us to our children's children and nations when these messages goes on and on everybody going to be blessed because of this is Jesus prayer so I'm going to read in 
chapter 17, verse 2 and 3. It says here, because it's saying, Father, give me glory. Glorify me so I can glorify you. Because glory belongs to Father and the Son. And that's what, the, what started. And the second word says that, for you granted him authority, him in Jesus, over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God. This is the eternal life, what Jesus is saying. That they know, mean the people or the disciple, or everybody will come to know that you are the true God and this is eternal life. Once we come to understand that God is a true God and only one God, that's eternal life. That's what Jesus is saying. Only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Because the focus is that you are true God, and you have sent me, and I am abiding in you, and you are abiding in me. So glory goes to the Father as well as the Son. And this prayer, if you, if you go to the history, and you, if you check the John chapter 17, it is the last speech, publicly or with, with his disciples. After that, she was uh, he was crucified. Jesus was crucified after this. And that was the last hour. In the first verse, if I, I would go and read that, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Because these are the last hours Jesus was. After immediately, he went to the trial and then on the cross and the resurrection. But what he is saying, Father, whatever you have given me, I have done everything. You sent me, you have given me responsibility and all the responsibility till the last assignment was there to give his life on the cross. But rest of everything Jesus has done in his life, he was asking father and doing exactly what the father was saying. That's the reason he said. Verses 1 to 5, Jesus was talking about the glory and from 6 to 10, it says about his disciple. I'm reading from verse 7. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not pray, praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Verse 11. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. So Jesus is saying, protect my disciples. And if Jesus is saying something, you remember when Jesus was in Lazarus' death, you know, when he went there and even on the grave. He said, Father, I know you hear my, my prayer. But just because of these people, I'm praying that glorify you or to, to raise Lazarus. So Jesus' prayer are always answered. So Jesus said, protect. Now the question is, you could, you could see uh, after this, most of the disciples been passing through the trials and tribulations and the pain and the suffering. But Jesus was saying, protect them. Actually, Jesus was praying to protect their faith. Because eternal life is not physical life. When we come to this earth, when we are in this physical body, we will have a pain and suffering and things happens in our life. And eventually, we have to go 
from this place to eternity with Jesus. Verse 15, it says, My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. This is of his disciples, remaining disciples. And now, for you, for me, for all of us, verse 20 to 26, but I'm reading a couple of verses here. Jesus prayed for all believers. It says here, My prayer is not for them alone, I pray also for those who will believe in through their message. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. So that the world may believe that you have sent me. Again and again, all these three scriptures, Jesus is emphasizing that Lord my Father, true God, you have sent me. And I am sending them. That is the focus of all, all of the verses. Verse 24, it says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with you, with me where I am, and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. And you can, you can complete and you can read that. The whole of the scripture, as I have read, and it, it come to me that Jesus' prayer for protection, protection of our faith, even Jesus has prayed, but we have a free will. And we have to choose to, to obey him. And as soon as we start obeying him, the things will change. Miracle happen in our life on the daily basis. So we need to choose on a daily basis to follow Christ. And that is the theme of all of this. And Jesus again and again says that as I am in you, you are in me, so they will be in me. And with, with us, you know. So we all need to be abide in the Lord, in Jesus to perform what he wants us to do. Whatever the assignment God has for us, we can do only when we abide in him. Without him, we can't do anything. If we go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it says that, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 18 it says that and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned and these signs will follow those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will, they will take up serpent. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The last verse, which is, belongs to Luke chapter 9, verse 2. Most of you have probably read Many times when you enter on this door, it is on the top. And it's our faith statement as well. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. What Father has sent Jesus and Jesus has sent you and me. If we are disciple of the Lord Jesus, if we are the children of the most holy God, if we understand there is only one God, true God, that means we have that message. God has given us the same message with Jesus' head. Because we abide in him. If we abide in him, we have to follow what Jesus is saying. But as we, we know it, it was when, when Jesus was crucified, 
during that time when he was in having a trial, his own disciples get confused because they have a different paradigm of thinking. They were thinking that Jesus will give us a, a kingdom or he become a king and we become maybe, you know, next to the king and we, we will be officials and something like that. But it never happens. When Jesus was uh, crucified, all of their thoughts were different and some of them wanted to go for fishing again. Even they have the top teacher of the world with them. He taught them three and a half years. But the same problem with them. Peter, life, you can, I have said before many times, but I can say a hundred times more. Peter deny three times Jesus, you know. The same Peter who was claiming a lot of big things. I can do Jesus this. I can die for you. Nothing can. He, he tried to protect all the time. But he denied three times. Thomas, when Jesus was rose again, and he was among his disciples, and he was not there. And when other disciples said, you know, Lord came, and he said, I can't believe. Even he saw Lazarus. He healed Lazarus, but he forgot all what Jesus said. He said, I only believe when I would check his side and his hand. Then I believe, Lord. And Jesus appeared and he said, Thomas, come and check my hand and check my side. The third disciple who sold Jesus in 30 denarii or coins. So all these out of 12, these three, maybe the other nine having some other issue, which is not mentioned, not maybe bigger, but they were, everybody had some issue. So today the church is having some issues, even whatever the level you are serving, there are some small or big issues in our life. But the most important thing is, Jesus knew all this thing. Jesus knew that they are not still prepared. They have knowledge. They have seen what I have done in front of them. They have experienced that what Lord can do, but they don't have inner strength. And that's the reason when Jesus rose again and Jesus was going to heaven, the last in Acts chapter 1, if we read that, what Jesus said, Jesus said to his disciple, tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry in Jerusalem until you got the power of the Holy Spirit. And that was the key moment for the, for the lives of his disciples. Because they could understand what Jesus is saying. And they saw their Lord is going to heaven. An angel came and spoke to them and all that. But they follow what Jesus said. They were waiting. They were praying. They were fasting. And it was not normal days. Especially in Pentecost day. When they were praying and they were fasting. Because it was Passover time in, in Jerusalem. And people used to come from all around the world. To celebrate that Passover. And different nations. Different countries. From all around, you could, you could read chapter 1 and you would know that how many nations were there when this great event happened. And they were praying. And Jesus, in, in Acts chapter 1, it says that Jesus appeared to about 500 people for 40 days. 40 days he was among his disciples. In different moments, he was speaking to them. I can go to Acts chapter 14, sorry, Acts chapter 1. And have to read some of the scriptures from here. Acts chapter 1, if I would read from uh, verse 3b. Here it says, He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was he was eating with them. He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father, my father promised, which you have heard, heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized 
with the Holy Spirit. That was the key. They didn't yet baptize with the Holy Spirit. And that was the reason they don't have the full benefit of Lord Jesus. They couldn't understand why. Even when I read three different scriptures. But if you go and read John last chapter where Jesus is talking to Peter. And Peter was, when Jesus said, do you love me, Peter? And he said, yes, Lord, I love you. And he said, feed my sheep and feed my lamb. Look after or care my lamb three times. And third time he was very upset because he knew what he has done. He was feel guilty from inside. But Jesus knew all, all the condition of his heart. And that's, what, that's the reason Jesus said, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost, which was promised. And if today people become born again, we go on street and we talk to people, we pray for people, we explain all this thing and we ask them, you know, uh, do you have experience of to be born again? And some people think they are born again because they go to church. And you can, you can have many, many different type of uh, knowledge, different people having. But once they come to know, born again means it's your personal decision with the Lord. When you invite Jesus to come into your life. And you confess that I am a sinner and I need you, Jesus. Please forgive my sin. And the day you pray this prayer with sincerity of your heart, you become born again. But it is not finished here. If you're staying just born again, if anybody's here or anyone who's listening on, online or maybe after a, a month or a year, if somebody would listen to this message, you are born again. Brilliant. It's good. Thank God your name is written. And you can make heaven. But you won't get the successful life on this earth if you stay only on this. Because you have to have other steps to do. And the next step is you need to take water baptism, immerse one. That's what Bible says that. And I was, I was uh, when I was, I mean, not born again, I gave my heart to the Lord. And I thought everything is okay. Because I was baby when my mom and dad, they took me. And they call it baptism, which was not baptism. And I was, you know, arguing with one of my brother, talking that I don't need a water baptism. Because Ephesians chapter 4 says that God is one, baptism is one. If my baptism has already happened, why should I take that? And it was deception. Not clear. But once I read and understood that, it was not baptism, it was just a dedication, but baptism is your choice to take and go, repent, and then you can take, you know. I took the water baptism, so if anybody is having any confusion, so you have to take water baptism, that's the second step. And then when you take the water baptism, then the promise is that you will get the baptism of the Holy Spirit from heaven and you Need to do nothing, but God gonna do. You have to use your mouth and faith. If you believe Jesus died for you, and if you believe the word of God is true, then you have to believe to speak in tongues when you pray. And it was a challenge to me. I, I remember, you know, after a long time, I couldn't have a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And every time in, in our church, People come to speak in tongues and baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you want, you can come. I used to come, stand on the front and just the person is praying in tongues, talking about scriptures and all. And I was always listening and I was thinking, God, you're going to come and you're going to vibrate my tongue. You're going to speak on my behalf or something happened and I would be unconscious, maybe speaking in tongues. And that I maybe understood that this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it never happened. It took me many years because of wrong understanding. And all the time when a word used to come in my mouth to speak. And I usually think it might be the pastor word I'm copying. Or it may be the person next to me is speaking and I'm catching that word. And I want to speak that word. And I couldn't have that. And I couldn't get the full benefit of power of God. So I want to tell you if anybody who's listening now or maybe online or maybe listen after one year or two years or five years 
We all need baptism of the Holy Spirit. If the early church, if the disciples who been with Jesus need Holy Spirit baptism, you and I need exactly the same. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot go for a successful Christian life. You would struggle every other day. You would fall and repent. You would fall and repent. That's what happens to me. Sometime, like David, raise hand. God bless you, David. I used to, when, when the repentance prayers used to come, come forward if you, if you need a prayer. I used to go. And after a few times, I used to think, shall I go or not? What people would think? Every other day I would sin and I repent, sin and repent. And I struggle, but I say, I don't care about people. I care about my God. And I used to go there in front and I say, God, please forgive me. And I believe God forgive every time you ask. And again, you will feel the joy of the Lord. But what happens? Because you don't have strength and power inside, so enemy will trap you like this. Because you are like a slave. In Bible it says that a child, a baby Christian is no more than a slave. Because he cannot do for himself. And that's what happens to me. And I, I believe if somebody is listening, please pray and talk to the leadership. If you need water baptism, immersion, or you need or you are struggling, baptism of the Holy Spirit. We will lay hand and pray. And I believe you will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. A few weeks back, I just uh, will we'll go back to my, my topic. A few weeks back, we, we were on street on Friday, and uh, I spoke to a young man, and I, I asked about, are you born again? He said, yes. And I asked, when do you remember? He said, yes, 10 years back, I become born again. And I, I said, did you have a water baptism in immersion? Yes. He said, yes. I said, okay, do you have a desire of the Holy Spirit? Or... Uh, did you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit? He said, no, I didn't. I said, okay, why? He said, I don't know. I said, okay, and do you have a desire? He said, yes, I do have a desire. I explained a few scriptures and explained my experience. And I said, if you want, I can pray for you. And he said, why not? Yes, please. And I lay hand on him and pray for him and explain to him, if any word come in your mouth, don't think because I've explained all these things. And he started praying in tongues. And he was really, it was second time in last 12 years, the second person, I mean, get the baptism of the Holy Spirit on the street. So in 10, 12 years time, one in Kensham, one in, uh, I think, bad ministry, that's called. But the, the important thing is, we need to be born again. We need to be, have a baptism of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, sorry. Delphine, can I have? Sorry. I was reading from Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> it says here uh, in verse 7, He said to them, it is not you to know uh, the time. I, I would go to verse 8, sorry, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So when you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then you can do that. If you go to chapter it says here in verse 1 I'm reading from before that after this they, uh, we, we know that one of the disciples was short in, in the 12 and they have a lot to, to find one of the faithful person among two they got one so they become 12 again so I'm reading on chapter number 2 when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of the violent wind came from the heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw that uh, what seems to 
be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as Spirit enabled them. Enabled them. Now everybody receive Holy Spirit, but the experience was totally different. They saw the, the tongues, the fire, all these things. But if we wait still, that can happen. That was the first time. After that, if you go to the book of Acts, you know, uh, apostles has put the hand and pray and people being uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. So you don't need to. I used to think about that again, you know. Something happened and the fire will come and something, you know. So I would get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which was lack of understanding. So it, it happens. People get that. And you know what happens? They speak in tongues. And now, as I said, the background is because of the Passover, there were thousands of people around. It was a big market where they were. And once they have heard, they thought, oh, we are Egyptians or we are Asian or we are, you know, uh, from Libya or uh, many, many countries' names are here from Rome, visitors from the Rome. I mean, everybody was listening. Oh, they are talking about God or they are talking our language. They are not all local people. How they know? But they start talking to them. And eventually, when Peter come to know, he came forward and he preached them and he tell them because during that time, everybody in Jerusalem knew what happens, what event was happened in Jerusalem. It was not hidden. It was not that nobody knew what happens about Jesus. Everybody knew, even when he was crucified, the darkness come on the earth. It was evident. Everybody knew that a great event been happened. There was an earthquake happen during when Jesus was crucified. And all these days, Everybody understand when they were, they were talking about Jesus. And Peter addressed. Peter addressed the crowd. What he says that. Then Peter stood up with 11. Raised his voice. And addressed the crowd. Follow Jesus and all you who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain. This is to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is not was spoken by the prophet Joel. So what he was saying, some people were thinking about why they're speaking in tongues, and some people laughed. Some people, they, oh, they are drunk, and they are, they are saying something, you know. But because they were from the prophecy, and that's what Peter mentioned, the book Book of Joel is saying about that all prophecies. In the last days, it's according to, he's quoting the book of Joel. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughter will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. So that's what the Joel, the people will speak in tongues as, we, as you will go and read. So, they could understand. Now when Peter was speaking to them, I believe he was not speaking by his own word. Because he was having the power of the Holy Spirit. If it is Peter, nothing can change. Because it was God speaking through him, that's the reason these old people heard. And their heart was broken. And they thought, oh... We lost. What we have done was not right. That's if we go to the verse. He, he mentioned all the prophecies. All it was written. Uh, uh, King David says about Jesus. All these evidence and the scriptures he quoted. Because most of them understood what he's talking about. He's not talking about anything which was not scripture. It's already in, in, the, in the book. And if we read from chapter 2, verse 37, when the people heard, when the people heard, they were cut off the heart and said to Peter and the other apostle, brothers, 
What shall we do? Now they come to know they did mistake. And what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and baptize. Baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. Which Jesus has already prayed. He was saying you and your children and your children's children. And the message will pass on. And that is the reason the kingdom of God will extend to the end of the age. Even the last thing would happen in this earth. But Jesus would be the king. People would cry out before God. People would say, all the kingdoms, if you go to Babylonians and other kingdoms, just came and gone. United Kingdom, one time it was around the world. Hundreds of countries were in United Kingdom and now it's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and now it's become just only three, four countries are there and still there are voices. Keep us keep, keep separate, see, keep us separate and all this. And kingdoms could not manage as much as the United Kingdom has because of some reasons. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, uh, Peter spoke to them here and they baptized in, in the next verse, if we go to verse 41, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000 new believers came in one day. And you know, I'm believing the same thing in Bristol. We are believing the same thing in Bristol. Because we know it is really such a time like this as the youth title is. This is the right time when the harvest is ready. And we need to pray to the Lord of harvest to send the laborer. We are all chosen. We are all having the same commandment to go and preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. If you are not going, you are not preaching, you are not healing people. The first step is go. There is a man, one of my brother here is John. He comes to uh, Petra with us. He don't speak many people. He just hold the script, uh, I mean the leaflets. He passed the leaflets. And he listened how we do that. And some of the people, I'm talking about street evangelism, you might think, that's not my thing, that's not my piece of cake, whatever. But that's the reason we are here in this earth. You don't know the person next to you is going to be dying next day without knowing Jesus and you were next to him, couldn't speak to the person. I remember last uh, few months back, I had an uh, uh, appointment and they normally say you don't need to drive, you have to come uh, with, with somebody or by bus. So I went there. When I was coming, I was praying, Lord, give me somebody to talk to, uh, to you. And the person next to me, I just started hello, hi, and then different questions. And I come to know that he is just coming to the same place where I was going. I stopped before. And I thought I would say bye, but I thought, okay, I can walk, you know. Uh, one stop nearly half a mile or quarter mile. So I, I woke up with, with him and I just start talking about Jesus. And then at the end, what happens? He gave his heart to the Lord. And if I can do, I, I do understand not everybody can go at this level. But at least you can, you can ask, do you go to any church? Or we have in a church youth conference, if somebody you know, you can, you can call them. and invite. Just to invite person, your colleagues, your neighbor, wherever you are. You can just invite people. There is even, you might like, or your son might like, or your daughter might like. That's your evangelism. You can come. And if you want to be equipped, there is a good Bible college. I have been in Bible college. I've done three years and then the fourth year as well here in Bible college, which has changed my life, my thinking, my way of uh, understanding Bible. So if you need to go to Bible college, see Brother Nigel here. Because this is equipping church. And we all need to equip ourselves 
to help other people. And that's the will of the Father. And you have no excuse. Oh, that's not my talent. That's not my gifting. It's not about gifting. It's about the love of God. If you have a love of God, you can't see somebody is dying. And you can't help. So do whatever you can do. And I believe God is there to help you. I don't know how long it's... Uh, some of the things I just wanted to tell you here, a couple of more verses, but I believe I couldn't close uh, what I have to close in, in the way because the time is going very fast. Here in verse 42, it says that uh, because they baptized, they joined the church, 3,000 people came to there, and now they devoted themselves to the apostle, teacher, and to to fellowship. So apostle, teacher, and fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So all these people, they become born again and they start coming and joining the church. They are talking to the pastors or the, you know, uh, at that time they were not using that term pastors, but, you know, they were coming to the leadership and they were equipped by, uh, you know, by them. And they were participating to the communion service and, and fellowship, which help us. And I believe at that time, the apostles may not have, uh, you know, the book of John or book of Mark or all these four, but they have the testimonies. They have been with Jesus and they were telling to them what happens, how Peter can, can explain Lord was saying, because Lord's word were the Bible. Lord, were the, the true living essence for people. And most of the people, I believe these 3,000 people have heard the first-hand stories from Peter and John and James and other people. And they've been blessed. And they were doing what we are doing exactly, you know, not maybe slightly different way, but we, we have the communion service, we have the fellowship, we have different youth and other activities. It's not only activities, we involve, we try to equip each other so we can serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And that is the only aim as a believer. I'm very sorry I couldn't manage to, to go up to the few other points, but I believe Holy Spirit will, will help us to understand that we need to do something what the Lord is saying on a daily basis. We need to ask God, Lord, what's your plan? Just for a minute or two before leaving your house, just ask, Lord, what's your plan? What do you want me to do today? And believe me, it's, it's my hard desire. I remember if I went to London uh, and people give their heart to the Lord. I went to Birmingham, people give their heart to their, you know. Anywhere on holidays, I, I go on holidays and I just pray and ask God, Lord, where is opportunity to talk? And I have seen, I can give you the name uh, of the people that they give their life to to the Lord. And you are not different than me. We all have Lord Jesus in us and Jesus will make difference. Not your intellectual power. Or as I was saying, Peter couldn't bring 3,000 people. It was Holy Spirit in him to speak. May God bless you and I hope our Lord will speak to you and give you a vision. Let's close your eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If anyone among us feel that he need to come to the Lord, if any visitor who didn't make decision before God that, Lord, I need you, please forgive me. You need to be born again. Then you show your hand and we will pray at the end. I will pray. Or if you want to recommit your life to the Lord. Because we don't need to feel anything. We need to be honest and we need to come before God. Because God is the one who can change our life. Who can bless us. Thank you, sister. And if you, if you want water baptism, just give your name to the reception. If you need 
baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you haven't have experience of that, so it's still opportunity. You can show your your hand, and I'll I'll speak to you later or somebody in in the leadership. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness, Lord God. Lord, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Lord God. Lord, I thank you. That you speak to us, Lord God. And you indicate the areas where we need to work. I pray right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch every heart, Lord God. Every soul here in this place, Lord God. And the people who are listening online, Lord God. Or they will listen or will see. Lord, I pray. Touch their heart. And use for your glory, Lord God. We have only one purpose here. On this earth. To do the will of our Father. And Lord, this is your will that we have to go and preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Lord, bless each of us, strengthen us, and use for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you come? Okay. God bless you.